And this is a very important thing when you travel, is to get photos of the people that are there too. Because the landscapes are great, the architecture is great, all that kind of stuff is great. Uh, but the people kind of really connect it all together. They're the glue that makes it all work. This is a story about Kent State and a speech I gave there and how something surprising came out of it about color. So I was invited to give a, a speech at Kent State and uh, I went up there and uh, you know you know the routine when you go to a city you've never been to you check into a hotel and you kind of walk in and and uh, you get your laptop plugged in you get your stuff kind of put away and you're you know you're kind of like uh, what do I do next and then you're like okay well I guess I should actually prepare for this speech that I have to give. And I usually like to keep it uh, like super fresh and never do the same thing twice. Because um, it's a challenge for me. And I think even though the audience, even though maybe it's their first time hearing it, they might just sort of sense a, a, a freshness to it. I'm not, I don't think I have enough guile to actually have this super prepared um, speech kind of thing. I usually have a few general ideas just kind of flow between them. Um, kind of like the way I, I do these things. Um, so I uh, was going to go up to the speech, but beforehand, uh, before I gave the speech to the whole you know student body, they wanted me to meet with the uh, the photography students. You know, they're elite photography students, and the dean there, his name was Lester. We got to be friends. Really cool guy, a keen photographer himself. Um, we went into this room, and he set all this stuff up ahead of time with about. Uh, 16 students um, sitting around a, a, a conference table and you know they were there just to ask me questions we're gonna hang out and I guess I was there to dispense some words of wisdom because um, I was there for this thing called the uh, distinguished Le lecturer series or something it sounds like a distinguished makes you sound so old I don't really feel that old I feel young and fresh most of the time some days I do feel a bit old uh, but anyway, so I was there uh, with all these young kids, all these college students, and they were asking me all kinds of questions. And I love getting questions from people, I really do. I especially like weird questions that I don't expect. And this one uh, young woman, uh, she asked me, she goes, you know, when you were growing up, um, how long was it before you had glasses? And how did you see the world before that? And I thought, oh, that's a good question. Because I didn't actually get glasses until I was a bit older, maybe like five or six, which meant that I had terrible vision for the first you know, four or five years of my life. And I know what it's like now when I take off my glasses, I can hardly see anything. So I guess that's how I saw for my first four years. Um, so I paused when she asked me this question and I thought about it, and I thought, well, you know, when you're, when you're born, you have all your body parts and all this stuff, but it actually takes you a few years to learn how to use your legs, doesn't it? I mean, even though your legs are attached to your body, you don't actually learn how to walk for a few years. And I think it's the same way with, with your eyes. Even though your eyes are attached to your body, you don't actually fully know how to use your eyes and brain for a few years, too. And because I couldn't see clearly, I got to know the world through blobby colors, okay? So I got to know my mom's face as this sort of mass of colors. I got to know trees as this mass of colors and, you know, carpet and windows and balls and everything, you know, I never realized that everyone else in the world could actually see sharp lines. To me, it was just sort of this fuzzy, colorful place. And so my brain learned to interpret the world initially through color rather than sharpness. And it was kind of only my later years when I started studying different different kinds of things. Um, actually, most of the books I read, actually, I read nothing about photography. Most of the books I read are about anthropology or science or genetics or particle physics or um, a lot of geeky stuff too, like, uh, not like that wasn't geeky, but, uh, you know, fantasy fiction and this sort of stuff. Um, but in my reading, um, I've, you know, since discovered that your brain is just sort of this pattern matching device, right? You just kind of go around and match patterns all the time. And as you match patterns, um, you identify different sorts of things in your pattern matching device, right? Um, there's color, saturation, and light. 
and then there's contrast, sharpness, and line. Okay. So my brain, when I see the world, I first interpret it using color, light, and saturation. That's the first thing I notice when I look at a scene. And consequently, this is what I really feel like I bring out in my photos, is color, light, and saturation. Now it doesn't mean that I don't notice line, sharpness, and contrast. I see all that kind of stuff, all the shapes, this sort of thing. But I think that actually people that grow up with really sharp vision, good vision, uh, they might tend more towards the black and white photography or very hard lines because that's how they first interpret the world is, is via shape, contrast, and line. Me, on the other hand, I'm on the other side. I do notice both sides of it. And I think, well, it's actually the result of me having terrible vision that helped me to discover HDR. And it was through kind of teaching these kids and talking to them and hearing these questions that I was able to get insight into myself. So that ended up changing a lot of my speech. Uh, when I ended up talking later that evening, um, I talked about the importance of teaching. And, um, you know, I love teaching. Um, I don't do it that often. Usually I'm out by myself shooting alone, but I try to take several opportunities per year um, to teach, like we're here with a group of people in Africa. Um, it's been great to have, you know, this one-on-one -on -one experience, get all kinds of questions, because every time that someone asks me a question, it helps me to reanalyze what I know or what I think I know. And sometimes I come up with new discoveries about myself that might contribute to my own creativeness going forward. So I encourage you know, everyone watching this, even if you feel like you're kind of a beginner photographer, an intermediate photographer, to actually teach people. Because you'll be amazed how much you'll find out about yourself and your own creativity through teaching others. Welcome to the Thunderdome, or as I like to call it, welcome to iPhoto on my Mac in my studio. Let's talk more about what I was just saying there on the Okavango Delta. Let's start by me sharing a few of my photos that focus on these themes that I was discussing, like line, contrast, and shape. A lot of these are black and white, um, like this reduction of an uh, island in Bora Bora. There was someone kayaking out to the island. And it was a foggy morning. and Sometimes when there's a lack of color, it makes me think more about the shapes, like this situation. Here's another scene from China. Uh, this little girl was out there just running around and playing. I was actually across the street. I was buying some, some silver jewelry from her dad. And he was, you know, stamping out some jewelry and kind of getting it ready for me while his, his daughter ran across the street and his dad was next door sitting sitting alone. Uh, this is also from uh, the south part of China, uh, another foggy day. And sometimes when it's so foggy and misty, it is all about the shape. So I, I try to focus on these things in, in the actual composition in the final photo. Uh, saw this while walking around. I thought it was so unusual to see half of a house just open like this while they're building it. A little scene I grabbed here. Uh, this is from Burning Man. And when these sandstorms come in, it does reduce everything down to the shapes. And it reminds you that in certain situations, just color is not that important. It is about the shapes. I do love this photo. Uh, this is in China, um, near Beijing, uh, sort of an industrial park. But I thought this looked so amazing. It was like a, a spaceship or something. This is not too far from my house. This is up in Wanaka. They have these amazing trees along the lake. And uh, the, shapes, the shapes are so wonderful. So I got down nice and low. And you can see what I did here. I don't know if you notice it, but when I explain it, it'll make more sense. Is that, you know, I could have been in any position around the tree, but I tried to get in a position where there was very little behind the tree so that the, the trunk, the shape of the trunk, would not compete with the, the shape of the mountains or the darkness of the other trees or, or what have you. This is a, up in Iceland. I was in the fjords going over a mountain and way up high and it was all snowy and there's this old cold cabin that was all alone and yeah so when i saw this i was just thinking black and white and shapes the whole time this is an amazing uh, airport i believe this is in barcelona and the, the floor was just like a mirror and the color version was nice but then i tried black and white i was like whoa that's pretty rad so i kind of stuck with that one uh, 
this is the space shuttle um, on one of its final um, launch days. I think this might have been the, the final um, space shuttle ever to launch, in fact. This is in New York City. This is the Flat Iron Building. I sat there forever <laughs> just watching people cross back and forth. I waited for this guy to cross with his, his jacket kind of flapping up there in the wind. This is in Angkor Wat, Cambodia. I loved how this uh, tree was growing on top of the tomb. And, you know, this isn't black and white, but it is all about the shapes. I think even if you go with one of these uh, monotone type color situations, it still brings it to the shapes. I, I find the shape to be super feminine. Uh, now let's get to the Africa photos. These are photos that I uh, took just right around when you saw the, that little video there. Um, here's a, one of these wonderful elephants. This is a shallow depth of field shot. And I got in tight and you know, to me, the elephant um, is all about the shape of the elephant. And so I'm not sure color adds that much to it. Besides, they don't have that much color to begin with. So um, here's uh, kind of a wonderful lion, lioness, just kind of hiding in the grass. So cool. Um, here's sort of a, a special version I did of another lion shot. I used a program called Analog FX Pro here to give it sort of this look, this sort of wet plate look, and I, I quite like it. Um, here's another shot that's kind of all about the shape. We were doing some shooting out in these crazy trees and this, this really windy kind of um, uh, deserty area in Namibia. And it was actually all white all around us. And I think it's because Belle just has this raven-esque black hair. She, she wears a lot of black. And sometimes when I, when I see her, I'm thinking black and white. And, uh, you know, we, we sit around a lot while we're, while we're preparing the videos and this kind of stuff. She's getting her camera ready and... And so I just end up taking pictures of her and uh, just trying out different things. And sometimes when I am post-processing, I'm like, let's try it black and white. And then it just comes out so, so nice. Uh, and here's the, the last photo that I'll share with you from, from, the, uh, from sort of the wildlife portion of it. Um, I do love this photo. And, and what it reminds me of is that the elephant um, which turned out to be my absolute favorite animal there. I could just watch those guys all day long. It is so much about the shape of the elephant. And when you add too much color to a situation, it does distract from the shape of the elephant. So again, I try to get into this reductionist mode where I keep reducing, reducing, reducing until the basic elements of the photo. And in this case, I feel like the shape of the elephant is the most important thing. And I'll share one little final story with you here. Um, this is not black and white, but there's just a little hint of color. So when I left Botswana, I was going to Cape Town because we do these photo walks all around the world and we're gonna have a huge um, uh, one in Cape Town. I was super excited about it. But I got to the airport in Botswana and they wouldn't let me through because they said I had too many stamps in my passport, which I thought was absurd. There was room for a few more stamps, but they would not let me leave the airport unless I had a fully blank page. So I got shut down, I went to every supervisor. It was quite frustrating, but I was like, ah, oh, mm, all right, so be it, Jedi. So I ended up having to fly to the capital of, of Botswana. And this is me kind of waiting in the airport in the capital of Botswana to catch up with the rest of my crew in, in South Africa. But I saw all these people lined up here and I thought it was kind of cool. All right, let's work on a photo together. Okay, here's two photos we're gonna work on together, all right. Uh, we'll start with this one and then we'll end up with this one okay so let's make them look extra pretty pretty shall we so let's jump into the develop module so let me tell you what i want to do with this one um, this is a shot that is clearly about the shapes isn't it and what i want to do is is reduce it even more and i want to reduce it to black and white and i'll show you how i do that all right let's uh, crop in just a little bit okay i'm gonna bring it in just here Bring this down a little bit and there's a few maybe like imperfections in the sand um, dare we say uh, like here there's a little tuft of grass so we're going to click that and kind of get rid of that here there's a little tuft it's okay to have a few imperfections we're not going to be perfect just just a few okay there's a few other ones here let's see that one might be too big to get rid of safely uh, let's move that around like this this here here. So you can actually change the source. And that's what I'm doing. I'm changing the source that it's coming from. Okay, there we go. Good. 
Let's make our brush a little smaller with the left bracket. I'll paint over this. It'll pull from, let's have it pull from right there. There we go. Just trying to get rid of a few of these imperfections. Um, they kind of, I feel like they do kind of take away a little bit. Okay, and lastly, we'll do that one. Good, okay. Oops, we have another blip here. Get rid of that one. And let's have this be the source of it. There we go. Okay. This will be quite small in the photo, even though my, my work wasn't perfect there. Um, it'll still be quite small in the final photo. Ooh, there's one more blip right there. Let's get rid of that one. Oops, it's this one. This is the tool to click on. And right there. Cool. Okay, close. I like to amp up the colors a little bit because if you have strong colors before you convert to black and white, it makes your black and white even better. Okay. Um, let's not do the, we'll re drop down the clarity here a little bit because it adds a little bit too much. Um, it does enhance the, the, the waves here, but it also makes them just a little too hard. I think I want it, I want it to be soft. Okay. So we'll increase the vibrance here a little bit. You can see what that does to the sky. It really makes it more bluey blue. Um, okay, now we can switch here to black and white. Okay, and then we can start playing with these uh, various colors. Okay, like for example, blue is the sky, right? So we can we can choose to take the blue from the photo and make it dark or make it white. Okay, the sand is mostly orange. Okay, so we can choose to take the sand and make it more orangey or make it darker, whatever we want to do. So it's really kind of a fun thing, isn't it, to play, play with this situation. There's some yellow in the sand too, so we can make that brighter, so on and so forth. So let's look at it before and after. This is the before, and then after, we ended up with this nice um, white interpretation of it, black and white interpretation. I love it, I think it's so cool, so cool. Okay, now let's work on one final photo. We're going to work on this leopard photo, okay? I loved how this leopard gal was just uh, staring me down. She was like, that's right, I'm eating my food. That's right. Uh, so I want to do um, uh, one of my presets on it, okay? Um, you've heard me talk about these presets perhaps in other episodes. But you can see I'm just clicking on like Love Bike. It gives it that, that special look or a Party of Kids or... Clean Sunday, this is one of my favorites. But we're actually gonna do one of these um, sandstorm ones, okay? Uh, these are all ones that I came up with when I was in um, Burning Man. And right now I'm just mousing over them to see what happens up in that top um, left area, okay? This one looks kinda cool, this sandstorm super. Kinda gives it that orangey look. Um, sandstorm black, that's just too darn dark. Uh, this one's kind of nice, but it's a little bit hot on the edges. Um, let's see here. Hmm, I like this sandstorm hard top. That's pretty cool. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's start with that, and then we'll just adjust a little bit. Let's bring down the exposure a little bit. Okay. Um, highlights. What's that doing? Okay, I like that. I like the bright sky behind her. That looks pretty cool. The shadows. Let's bring this down just a little bit. Uh, the whites. Um, Maybe down just a little bit. The blacks, keep that there, good. Let's see what clarity does. Mm, well, not much that I like, actually. Uh, vibrance, saturation is still up a little bit. I do like that sort of oranginess. I feel like the outside is a little too bright. So let's go here into the uh, post crop vignetting and bring that down just a little bit, just to bring the attention on, on, that, uh, on the leopard. And let's go ahead and uh, crop in a little bit too. Okay, again, to keep the emphasis on, on the leopard. Okay, I want a little bit of a gap up here. I like this gap because it's clear there's another branch happening here. All right, good, that's looking pretty, pretty good. Now if we look up here, we can see that there's some chunkiness in this out of focus area, okay? You probably didn't notice it until I clicked on it. That's not the end of the world because it's a little bit out of focus, but let's soften it up just a little bit more. And the way we'll soften it up is I'm gonna click the brush here make the brush nice and big and I'll just kind of start painting over this now the reason it looks so bright is because those are kind of my previous settings okay we probably have the same kind of chunkiness over here so I'm going to paint over that as well um, let's bring that exposure back down by double clicking but let's just decrease the clarity okay and that'll just make it a little bit softer back there okay uh, maybe even desaturate just a little bit just a little bit there we go 
Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to bring a little bit of emphasis on the, the leopard's eyes here, okay, on her amazing eyes. Because when we use this preset, what we did is we basically took everything and made it sort of orangey-orange, including her eyes. Okay, so we're going to click here on this tool, and we're going to go into her eyes, okay, and we're going to paint right on her eyes. Now, of course, it's going to be super bright, makes it look like some sort of super possessed evil cat. Um, but we're going to bring that back down to normal, and then let's just cool it off a little bit here. Okay, and we will brighten them up a little bit. It's kind of cool, I think. And we're just going to kind of play with the color here. I just want to get something a little bit contrasty. Let's play with the tint a little bit here. If you really want to play with the color, which I think we do here because I'm not getting much result from that, is you can click on this color thing here. So I click on this. This is pretty cool because as I click and drag around, we can actually totally change the the color of the eyes okay we don't want to be too ridiculous but I think we want to get something a little bit complimentary just go just a little bit into the green zone okay something just like this very very subtle like this cool so then we say close we'll zoom out and that's sort of our final look um, isn't that awesome I love it so let's um, let's look at a before and after okay so this is the before this is what came right out of the camera, and then there is the after. Awesome. Well, thanks so much again for joining me for another episode. If you watched all the way through to this point, then you are hardcore, and I, I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Who knows what will happen? Who knows? When you look at a picture, Really, the first thing that happens is the person puts themselves into that scene. Like, what would it be like to stand there? It would be so awesome if I was there. That's a feeling you want people to have. And if you can explain depth to them in the way you compose your photo, it just makes their brain just automatically happier.